Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Coming up this week, Uber Black gets the green light to start picking up at Orlando International Airport. The Walt Disney World Dolphin is hit by a data breach. We'll also have updates on the opening of Star Wars Launch Bay at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And if you're going to be in Orlando on December 22nd, we have an exciting announcement coming up. All that coming up next. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is The Diz Unplugged. This is The Diz Unplugged, episode 862 for the week of December 1st, 2015. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the show, coming to you live from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner. Joined at the table this week by my good friends, John Magi. Hi, everybody. Kevin Close. Hello. Kathy Whirling. Hi, everybody. Corey Martin. Just happy to be here. And back in the production nook, our associate producer, Rhino Clavin. Hello. Along with our intern, Steve Porter. Hello. And our producer, Craig Williams. Hi, everyone. Can anyone else believe it is December 1st? No. Mm -mm. This year has just... The older you get, the faster it goes. It's like... We were just talking before the show. Today is the anniversary, the 60th anniversary of Rosa Parks being arrested. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Just an interesting fact. Yeah. And it's Bette Midler's birthday, if you care. <laughs> and then, then there's Happy that. Happy birthday, Bette. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it is, uh, it's December. We hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, we did take last week off uh, to spend with our families and cook. Luckily. And <laughs> just luckily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's got to become a regular thing. Um, we've got to take that week off. Of course, we have uh, one more show next week, and then we are on hiatus for the holidays. Coming back to you January 5th, correct? Yeah, January 5th mm -hmm. yeah. is our next show. With that said, we do have some special shows going up throughout December. So you will have some new stuff to watch and maybe listen to, depending on my mood. Uh, throughout the month so don't don't fret we're just not going to be going out live but uh if you are going to be in orlando for the holidays specifically on december 22nd we have something exciting to announce this is kind of last minute um and uh, working in conjunction with disney and uh but uh, dreams unlimited travel is going to be sponsoring a special preview i guess not a preview because no. it's a week after it opens but <laughs> uh we are an exclusive screening an exclusive screening of star wars the force awakens on september 22nd december 22nd december 22nd <laughs> at 10 a.m at uh point orlando the regal cinemas in point orlando on international drive and this is going to be a fundraiser for give kids the world it is going to be $35 per person. We have 100 seats available, $35 per person uh, to see the movie. We are going to sell 10 special seats, though, at $150 per person. And you get to have lunch with whatever members of the team are still in town on the 22nd. I will be there, and that's really all you need. Kevin and I will be here. And Okay, well, they're here, too. But we should charge extra for that. <laughs> really? I was thinking less. One fifty-five. <laughs> okay. No Should be a discount. So one hundred and fifty dollars. We're going to uh, open up ten seats for that, and you'll have lunch with us after the film. And uh, this is all to raise money for Give Kids the World, and one hundred percent of the money collected goes directly to Give Kids the World. And I am personally going to match the first twenty-five hundred that comes in. So we want to raise some nice money for Give Kids the World. Really uh, difficult, you know, considering it's only, what, four or five days after this film opens uh, that we're able to get uh, an exclusive screening That's like this. That's a big deal. Do so, I get any of this money for showing up to a Star Wars movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll buy a popcorn. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to have as many members of the team as we can. I know uh, the Ronettes there in the back are uh, all heading out of town. 
I'll be um, here still for the 22nd. Okay, so Craig will be here. The head run. Kathy, you're going to be around, right? Mm-hmm. Corey, you're not going anywhere. I should be here. So most of the team will be there. I think Jenny Lynn's still in town. So Teresa. Teresa. So, yeah, the only people you're going to be missing are Rhino and Steve, and really, who cares? The B team. Um, <laughs> really? Um, Especially Rhino. He'll probably talk through the movie anyways. Yeah, really. <laughs> or cry. <laughs> I'm pretty I will, sure he'll cry. I will the cry. Movie. <laughs> well, I already know I'm So going. really, really excited about this and want to thank our partners at Walt Disney Travel for setting this up for us. Uh, this was this was their doing. Um, and, uh, you know, helping us uh, promote dreams and raise money for Give Kids the World at the same time. So we are going to start taking signups for this next Monday, December, uh, December 7th. And, uh, you know, sorry for the short notice on it, but we just got confirmation on this yesterday. So I'm very, very excited about this. So if you'd like to see an exclusive screening of Star Wars The Force Awakens with the Diz team, that will be on December 22nd, 10 a.m. at the Regal Cinemas at Point Orlando on International Drive. And like I said, those tickets will go on sale next Monday. We're going to put it up everywhere and try and promote the heck out of this. Um, I, I I don't know how fast or how slow these tickets are going to go. Um, it's three weeks away. You know, so don't take any chances. Sometimes mm. I always think, oh, it's going to take us forever to sell that. Like Dizapalooza. Oh, my God. No, I think we'll do 100 tickets Within an hour, I think we'll be sold. Okay, out that's his prediction. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll check and see. Well, I'm willing to auction off my ticket. No, you're <laughs> done. So, all right. Um, also, want to make sure we give plugs out to the other Diz Unplugged shows going up this week. The Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged goes live every Sunday night, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific on Mixler.com. And uh, up on iTunes on Monday and on Tuesday this week, Mary Jo finishes up her Day 6 drive around the Long Beach area. And Michael chats with the Wisdom of Walt author Jeff Barnes about how to apply Walt Disney's leadership lessons in your own life. So that's already up on iTunes for those who want to go check it out. Uh, The Trip with Jenny Lynn Knopp and Teresa Eccles airs live every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And do we know what they're doing this week? Yeah, this week we are talking about ice at the Gaylord Palms. Oh, very cool. Yes. Very, very cool. Yeah, that's a great thing to go see mm-hmm. if you're if you're in town. You want something kind of different and fun to do for the holidays. I loved I have to get over there if I can. Oh, well, we're going tonight. A while. Yeah, no. Six thirty. No, I got plans. <laughs> okay. Got um, better things to do. And, um, of course, Thursdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, DizUnplugged.com, the universal edition of the Diz Unplugged with Craig Williams, Rhino Clavin, and Jenny Lynn Knopp. And what are we talking? I know you're talking about Skyplex this week. Because I'm going to be on the show this week because we are going to talk about Skyplex. Okay, this, well. This, I am so fascinated with this story. We I are. Guess. Apparently talking about Skyplex. Uh, <laughs> but after we're done talking about Skyplex, we are going a to... A character from Star Wars. <laughs> Skyplex is the the giant roller coaster they're trying to add on International. And Universal, oh, yeah, yeah, Universal yeah. is flailing all about town trying to prevent this from happening. Yeah. I mean, it is amazing. For somebody like me who kind of geeks out on the business side of this stuff, I am sitting here with popcorn. Like, oh my God, what are they going to do next? As a matter of fact, as we speak, right. yeah. the, uh, the the county commissioner meeting is going on where this is going to be decided if it gets greenlit or not. So very yeah. interested. We're hoping we can get Scott Maxwell from the Orlando Sentinel to come on and talk to us because he's been uh, he's been covering this for them. Yeah, just you know, I'm, I've been just like geeking out like crazy on this story. So, so are we going to have to wait till Thursday to hear how you feel? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Where is it going to be? You're Craig back there. Yes, please, please don't <laughs> save it for my show. Don't. Yeah, where is don't. this going to be? What's that? Where is it going to be located? Uh, this the, the, where they want to build it is on I Drive, um, and by Wet and Wild, right? By Wet and yeah. Wild, and you know there is. Okay, I'm just going to save it for Thursday. If you want to know what I think, because I I got you know I got rhythm, um, and okay. I got things to talk about. So. <laughs> so. Anyway, Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yeah, what else are you talking, talking about? <laughs> I know it's, Who it's can not ask for anything more. We're not doing the Skyplex show, but <laughs> well, we do, we'll talk about that. We'll do that in uh, news portion. But then after, um, for everyone coming into town this weekend, if you're leaving on Thursday or Friday, make sure to download our latest episode because we're going to do uh, a whole 
kind of a 201 version on diagonally. So everyone who's coming to Dizapalooza, it'll give you a refresher if you've kind of forgotten about everything that we've ever talked about in the past about it. That's so, cool. That is cool. Definitely listen. That is cool. Yep. And speaking of Dizapalooza, that is this Saturday, December Four 5th. Four more days. And I'm so stinking really excited exciting. about this. I am so pumped up. Cannot wait to see everybody who's coming up. Our guest list now exceeds 900 people. Wow. Um, well, it's 900 people who paid, and then, you know, of course, we have the team, and right. uh, we've some been invited, invited guests, some invited guests, some of our friends, and things like that. And, um, so I think uh, by the time all is said and done, we're going to be close to a thousand people. Yeah, that's what uh, that's the number I gave them. That's the number yeah. I gave Universal was a thousand, and we stopped and at 900 because I'm po- I'm, a, I'm mo- I was the most popular girl in rehab, so um, <laughs> we invited a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Use your imagination. Um, he danced a lot. I did. I danced a lot in rehab. Uh, so that's this Saturday. Very, very excited. And of course, uh, a national holiday Sunday. Uh, for those who uh, don't know, my birthday. I turned 51. A couple people have already been saying happy, happy birthday in the comments. No, 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 no. You have to wait. You have to wait until it is actually the day of my birth. He's going to do a show. He's going to do a solo the show. The day of my birth. <laughs> No, I, we're actually uh, we're going to go up uh, to Cracker Christmas. What are we going to do? Well, my family <laughs> and I and some friends are going up to Cracker Christmas up at Christmas Florida. I thought you said we're going to be up at the Cracker Christmas. And I said, <laughs> I, I, that's why I looked. I don't know what that meant. Or up Christmas is crack. Yeah, I'm not I really wasn't sure what he was talking. I about. wasn't sure what it. No, meant. I knew he said he was going to do it. I missed it. Yeah, my mother got so excited when I told her I wanted to do that. She loved that we did that a few years ago. So, it's fun. It's, it's official. At 50, you ran out of things to do. It's <laughs> <laughs> done. You have nothing else to do. You've done it all. Early bird dinners are the next <laughs> when you consider <laughs> When you consider that four months ago, I was trying to figure out if I could get to Hawaii for my 51st birthday. And now it's Cracker Christmas. <laughs> exactly. But you know what? It's not about where you are. It's who you're with. Yep, exactly. So I'm very excited because I got some friends in from out of town, some friends in from Canada. Um and of course, my family, and we're just gonna have a we're just gonna have a time. So I'm looking forward to it. But the Chatterati uh, want to know if you'll film this, like wear a GoPro on your forehead. No, well, one of those things that come out. Only and, and no, well that that's gonna require that's gonna require one of the Ronettes coming with us because I'm not filming anything. Um, when did, when I have did people at film. Ronettes? We used to be Craigettes. I'm just saying. Huh. Not Ronettes. <laughs> Ryan, Ronette. I think they should be the Wernets. Oh. Google it. The Wernets. <laughs> the Wernets. No, we'll have the Chatterati come up with a name for the uh, oh, no. well, the triumvirate back the there. The Nookettes. The Nookettes. Okay. <laughs> um, well, yeah, if one of them wants to go and be, because uh, I, I don't film, but I have people. I have <laughs> people. Um, I don't read. I'm read, too. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, yeah, I think we could do that. I think we could film my birthday, my birthday celebration. I think Rhino has to do a report on the Ronettes. <laughs> it's like a school report. Yeah, well, that's like right up the right, right up uh, the right in line with stuff you've been talking about wanting to do anyway. So. Yeah, that's fine. It sounds. Yeah, my mother's gonna be thrilled. By the way, Ma, this is being filmed for the show. Oh no, no! <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it now. I can the hear crackers it. Crackers go back in the cabinet. <laughs> you get to hear how I talk to my mother. The things I say to her <laughs> oh, when I introduce her to people, and I say she's a terrible alcoholic. <laughs> um, oh, Peter, stop. She's not watching right now because my sister Susan and Susan, Sue and Bob are leaving today. And uh, oh, you know what? That's something else. Posted a picture on Facebook. Uh, uh, what was it? Sunday night, we were at the uh, party, uh, at the Christmas party. And my niece Amy took a picture of me with my great nephew Robbie, who's two. And it was a really, really good picture. I was really, you know. It was just, we were both real happy, having a great time. And and I realize it's well-meaning, but people start in with that, we're concerned, you look sick. <sighs> and here was my response. Yeah, look, I know I've lost a lot of weight, and I lost it fairly rapidly. It's just kind of how it happened. I don't care how I got here. I got here. I'm 180 pounds, and only in America is 180 pounds considered cancer thin. Okay? 
I am 180 pounds. I am as healthy as a horse. My doctor says so. I say so. I have never felt better. I haven't felt this good in 20 years. I've got energy I've never had before. I've got a clarity I've never had before. The exercise, the diet, it's all working for me. And you know what? It's not a fad. It's not. It's just a lifestyle change. And I hope I can stick with it. I'm, I'm, I'm dedicated to it. But I'm not sick. Okay? So stop. Just <laughs> stop. But I thought that was a good response. Only in America is 180 pounds considered cancer thin. So um, I'm healthy, though. Thank you for your concern. I am healthy. But I had such a great time Saturday night with the kids. Just had a blast at the Christmas party. Okay. It was crazy, though. Crazy busy. Crazy busy that night. And then we did um, Candlelight Processional last night with Neil Patrick Harris. And he was... He's great. He was He's great. Always good. He was so funny. So funny. Always a great night. And had a wonderful dinner at Rose and Crown. Mm. Mm. That's become like the place we go now. This is like the fifth or sixth year in a row we've, we've done our Candlelight Processional dinner package at Rose and Crown. It was, it was great. Had a really wonderful meal. Had the chicken masala. I gotta tell you, it was fantastic. That's an odd choice for at Rose, at Rose, and, Crown. Rose and Crown. No, um, Indian food. Go to London. Go to London and see Indian foods everywhere. Is that an Italian marsala? No, masala. Oh, M-A-S-A-L-A. I thought you said Marsala. Yeah, I thought okay. that was no, chicken masala. Never mind. I'm used to saying marsala, but it's masala. So the Indian stuff was delicious. Absolutely delicious. Everybody had a great meal. So, all right, that's it. Well, yeah, that's it for me. Anybody else for housekeeping? No. no All right. It. Just want to remind everybody, send us your suggestions and comments on the show by visiting us at disunplugged.com slash contact or emailing us directly, podcast at disunplugged.com. And of course, show notes, everything we talk about, links to all the items we talk about in the show can be found on that site as well, disunplugged.com. And with that, we're going to throw it over to Johnny with the news. All right. Our first news story. Uber Black is now allowed to pick up at Orlando International Airport. Uber Black Black is now allowed to transport passengers both to and from the Orlando International Airport. Uh, This is considered, quote, the upscale version of the rideshare program and had previously been banned from picking people up from the airport because of an argument over airport fees. The agreement was reached last month, though it does not extend to UberX, the lower-priced version. Uber customers received a text message letting them know that Uber Black was now available to pick up from the airport. Bill Gibbons, spokesman for Uber, said, quote, with Uber Black, visitors that land at the Orlando International Airport will now have another safe, convenient transportation option available to them when they, where they need to go. Roger Chapin, spokesman for Mears Transportation, said, quote, it is our understanding that they have agreed to comply with all regulations and permitting requirements, including paying commercial lane fees like everyone else, which is all we ever suggested they do from the very beginning. According to the Orlando Sentinel, uh, Orlando International charges taxis a $50 application fee, $3.15 per hour dwell time, and $2.65 per passenger picked up. Last year, the airport collected $10.1 million for in vehicle for higher fees. Um, wow. The agreement between Orlando International Airport and Uber Black can be, re-exa- can be re-examined by either party in late May 2016. Hmm. This Huge is a big deal. victory yeah. for Uber. I agree. Huge. Big deal. Uh, this is going to have an impact on the transportation business in Orlando. Um, you know, uh, most of the transportation companies are small businesses in, in Orlando. Uh, that being said, they're not barred from being part of Uber. Right, I, I, when this came out, I called the owner of FL Tours, who's been an advertiser on Diz, for, I think 13, 14 years now, and I asked him, I said, what do you think about this? Is this gonna impact your business? FL Tours is a luxury transportation. They have limos, town cars, vans. They're not worried about it. They're actually happy about it because they say their clientele are not really going to use this because Correct. coming coming here with families, like we don't use Uber because we would like a car seat. And these are things you can't request ahead of time. With Uber, you get what you get. So it's more of like the, um, you know, just no kids, single adults, corporate. 
that's and that's not FL Tours' business. Their business is families. They're happy about it because it's going to cannibalize Mears. They're all well, Mears was the one mm-hmm. that was fighting yeah, exactly. this tooth and nail. Exactly. Yeah, so right. they're happy we, because we love Uber. We do love Uber. And, and you're absolutely right, Corey. What happens is people come to Orlando if you're a family and you've planned your vacation, you have all your transportation needs set up. This is for the businessman mm-hmm. who has come to Orlando for uh, you know a couple days meetings, maybe for the younger couple who's decide, who uses Uber in right. their hometown or their town and they know how to use it and they're comfortable with it. This is not for the regular family vacationer it's going to impact taxis it's going to impact um mirrors and i'm happy but i also that. think that i also think that existing transportation companies because i've seen this done in other cities as well <laughs> where existing transportation companies rather than trying to fight against uber they just kind of join the pack they do, and they yes. become part of the uber network right. so their drivers are are able to pick up these fares as well so you can look at it from the standpoint mm-hmm. that there's a new potential source of revenue here um, with that said, I think that, uh, you know, because you always have people that won't won't step up and yeah. go with the change. And I think some of those companies are going to go away. I think this con- this town could use a few fewer, honestly, yeah. a few fewer transportation companies. The other thing is Uber drivers all own their own vehicles. So there's some pride of ownership. I yeah. ask every driver mm-hmm. we use, is this your car? Mm-hmm. Yes. And they are contractors for Uber. So everybody's running their own small business. They're under a bigger umbrella, and I understand that. But they're all, I find that the cars are in better shape. The cars are better maintained. Um, Uber uh, supports local businesses, too, though, because they partnered with Jilly Cakes, my friend's cupcake store, um, to do this promotion that was promoting Uber and her cupcake store. So on this day, if you ordered an Uber, they would bring you, they would just deliver you cupcakes. They would just bring you free cupcakes, like four free cupcakes. And they did it. With another small cupcake store in South Carolina somewhere too, because they just wanted to help local business, but it was also celebrating like it was their one year in that city or something like that. So I, I thought that was really cool, like have, that they have that kind of like an outreach. Too. The guys who came up with Uber are really experts in viral market marketing. That's yeah. how they really started this business. So that doesn't surprise me. I'm glad to see though that Uber X is not here, because Uber mm-hmm. X is really just like, you know, Craig can say today I'm going to be a taxi yeah. and pick people up in the airport. That's never been the thing. And there's, th- there's ways around it. I've used the ways around it from the airport because even a taxi ride from the airport to where I'm going to go is going to be crazy. There are ways around it. You have to PM me. For, but or ask your driver how to get around it. When, when <laughs> I, I've seen you all use it and been a part of it, but I never set it up. Now, this is when they land here, they call Uber Black? You get it. You have an app on your phone okay. for Uber. Uh, you put in credit card information or payment information. You can do it from PayPal or you can put in a credit card. So it's all stored. And what happens is you get on the ground and you say, I want a car. And okay. uh, the, because of the phone, they know where you are. And, okay. what, I do is, I've seen. and yeah. what I do is I say where I'm going to. So let's say you put yeah. in Walt Disney World Dolphin, for okay. example. And this, it'll give you a fair estimate of how much it'll cost. There's a little picture on the map that shows you where the car is, how long it will take you till the car arrives. And then when you're ready to commit, you say, okay, I'm going to do it. And then a little thing pops up that says, you know, Steve is coming in his Lincoln Navigator, and he'll be there in two minutes. Okay. So when he pulls up, he'll say, uh, Miss Whirling, I'm your your Uber driver. You called for an Uber, so he identifies himself, and okay. you know that he's not just some guy. Kathy, I just sent you a, um, a text for a free ride. Well, up to fifteen dollars. So <laughs> when you download it, you'll okay. get a free ride up to fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. And we'll put that in the show notes too for anybody who wants a free fifteen dollar ride. The the, be- the biggest compliment I can give Uber is we came out of a Broadway show one night, a very popular show. Speaking of Neil Patrick Harris, we had gone to see Hedwig and the Angry Inch, sold out theater. Just mobs of people sure. walked out of the theater on a rainy Saturday night. So if you're familiar with New York, mm-hmm. a, uh, a cab in the theater district at a crowded play is hard. A cab in the rain, impossible. Uh, John did an Uber. It showed up within five minutes. We stayed under the overhang. And everybody under there tried to take that cab, and he asked to see ID. I'm here for Mr. Magi. And we walked out and drove away. Best thing ever. Mm-hmm. One, thing, awesome. one, one of the things I really like about Uber is that in most cities, you can actually ask for um, a town car or someone to poke you with their finger. <laughs> or, you <can> ask, <laughs> or you can ask. For the people listening, that's hilarious. Hilarious. 
or you can ask for an SUV. Okay. Because Kevin and I are big guys. If you try to put us in the back of a a newer a you go right town car. <laughs> It's not comfortable. Plus, you have luggage and stuff. So we know the vehicle that's going to pick us up is comfortable, is roomy. Mm-hmm. If you have five or six people, they could all fit into it. So we we like. It. I can't say enough good things about Uber. The other nice thing is there's no cash transaction. I love that. It all comes out of your phone, so there's no worry about paying the guy. How tip about is a tip? tip is built in. Tip oh, is built okay. in. And if you start tipping, you're kind of ruining the whole system for everybody else. Yeah. So. Oh. Tip is built okay. in. The other thing too is they're very, uh, they're very conscientious of their ratings. So one of the things they will say to you is, if you enjoyed the ride, please give me five stars. Five for five because yeah, they yeah. rate you too. Yes. Oh, okay. And then they'll they'll rate you as a customer because they don't want bad customers. But so that's the thing that they're really conscious about. But do you rate them? Do, I do every time. Do they do price tiering? I know UberX does. So if a, a bunch of people yeah. all at once request an Uber, it gets Uber more does expensive. it. Yeah. Yep, UberX does it. the yeah. same thing. We did it when we went to the Anthem sailing and we landed at the airport and one of the things it said was listen if you're willing to wait two hours which we weren't the prices will drop because Mm -hmm. the car now is a popular time for people to get a car so they do price steering for sure Mm. good news for Orlando I think yep 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 all right we would use it see you mirrors I mean not here but we would use Uber anywhere. I might use it here because I sometimes I fly in late at night and I can't find a friend or somebody to pick me up. And it's like $75 to take a cab from the airport to where I live. And it's not that far away. So it would be a lot cheaper. All right. Our next news story. New water park resort coming to Disney World. Great Wolf Resorts has announced plans for a new resort to be built near Walt Disney World. The water park resort company is based in Wisconsin and operates 14 hotels across the U.S. and Canada. The 800-unit Orlando Resort would be the first the company opens in Florida and and will be located on 50 acres on I-4 near Disney Springs. They're still in negotiations to buy the property. Susan Story, communications director for Great Wolf, said, quote, Great Wolf Resorts is always interested in expanding and bringing our unique indoor water park resorts to new markets. We are currently reviewing several viable options across the country, and the Orlando area remains an option. The Great Wolf Resorts are known for their log cabin appearance, quote, five-story water slides, wave pools, and multi-level tree houses, and restaurants, conference space, ropes and climbing, miniature golf, kids' spas, and mini bowling. The property in question, owned by Garrison Investment Group, sits north of the Marriott Sable Palms Resort and next to the Sheridan Visana Resort Villas. Well, they Mm -hmm. should uh, probably take a look at how Coco Key is done uh, with these water park resorts because Coco Key is over on iDrive and uh, has not done well. However, Great Wolves, I think, is a different concept. It's an indoor park. Right. I understand. I understand. But, (laughs) you know, even at the price point that Coco Key was charging, which was very low, they could not fill that hotel. They're also they were on. They're in the bad part. I the bad part. The lead in rate. They, they give you a low lead in rate, but they the resort service fee is like seventy bucks. So you might get a, a nine nine dollar rate, but they charge you seventy bucks because, because of the, of the water, water park. park. Yep. Even if you don't use it. The problem I see with this is Great Wolf is usually in places where the weather is inclement. Yeah, part yeah. Of exactly. Year. That's huge. We have pretty much nice weather. I mean, it's, it's what, 73, 74 outside today? So even though it's December 1st, it's still... 75 out right now. So there's no, I mean, who knows what the new uh, complex would be. It could be an outdoor park. It could be an indoor park. I think this, I mean, people who live near these and have gone to these are very excited about this. Mm -hmm. They say these are great resorts, not only from because there's a water park in there, but they say the resorts themselves are really well run and nice resorts. So I think it'll be interesting. I just think that... That's kind of a weird area to put it, you know? Yeah. Kind of smack dam over in National Drive. Sort Especially of. when we have Aquatica and the right. parks at Disney. Mm-hmm. And it, it just seems like... And whatever you know, Universal is going to build now. Right. This is, not, this is not a new concept here. Right. I mean, you plunk this down in the middle of someplace without an amusement park, or without a water park, and all of a sudden this is a big deal. I think it's going to be hard for them to be a big deal here. Um, I see it as a benefit, though, in two areas, really. The first one is Florida summers. Yeah, people want to be outside and stuff. But as soon as that lightning comes within five miles and everyone has to stay out of the water, 
uh, everyone at Great Wolf Lodge is going to be inside having a good time on their water rides. And I don't then, know if you can do that in the inside. I don't know if you, I think if you're there's a lightning storm in the area, you might still want to get out of the water. You probably should, but I don't think it's a requirement if it's an indoor. Um, and then the other thing is it might stay open later at night because of it, where the water parks are going to start closing once they, what, hits twilight? I also think of the terrible sunburns you can avoid. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I don't like going to pools and stuff. Ginger skin gets burnt. <laughs> Was she one of the Spice Girls? I was going to say, there's a new nickname ginger, for you. Ginger yeah. Skins. Ginger Skin. Ginger Skins. The Ginger Skins. <laughs> All right. Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> All right, our third and final news story. Yeah, I told him he had to go around, all, when he went to Austria, he had to go around introducing himself as Ginger Hitler. <laughs> ginger Hitler. <laughs> Adolf's daughter. <laughs> and see how people responded. Oh, man, that is so inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Walt Disney World Dolphin experiences data breach. Several Starwood, ho- Star- Starwood hotels, I have trouble with that one, boy, including the Walt Disney World Dolphin, were, were part of a data breach that took place over the last year. Malware. And malware. 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 <laughs> well, you know, where's it's, the mall? It's, it's the millennia, malware. <laughs> millennia breach. Malware in the payment systems gave hackers access to card numbers, card owner names, security codes, and expiration dates. The malware, malware. malware <laughs> was not found at the front desks, but was found in restaurants, gift shops, retail spaces, and bars in the hotels. Con- contact information, PIN numbers, and the loyalty program infor- information were not affected. Well, God forbid they get a hold of my loyalty <laughs> program information. Someone might use my 12 points. <laughs> <laughs> affected dates at the Dolphin were November 5th, 2014 through April 13th, 2015. The breach did not extend to the Swan Hotel. Questions can be directed to Starwood at 855-270-9179. Show us pictures of your malware. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This sounds like, you know, not really in the reservation system. It sounds like someone got into their POS and hacked their POS and started taking, that could happen to anybody, happen to any store. And, and it was it, uh, Star. It just so people understand, it, this was Starwood in in general, not right. just the Swan, uh, the Dolphin. It was just affected. Uh, it was it was it was all Starwood property. So if you stayed at a Starwood property between November fifth, two thousand fourteen, and April thirteenth, two thousand fifteen, you might want to give them a call and see if your information was among that that was compromised. But nowadays, I mean, haven't you all had been involved in? I mean. Is there anybody left out there that hasn't been involved in a I'm data breach? I'm always surprised. Like, my credit card company calls me and leaves the message or calls me and gets me and says, you know, we think there's suspicious activity before I even know anything's gone yeah. on, before anything's happened yet. So I think credit card companies are really up on this now and, you know, they're able to catch up. Well, I've also, you know, I, I subscribe to LifeLock. Okay. And I'm going to tell you something. You so much look at a credit application. Mm-hmm. And your phone's ringing, and emails are coming in, and text messages are coming in. They're really good. Oh, that's good. They're really, really that good. That happens if you shop at Haverty's Furniture Store, too. They call me. They come to the house. They text <laughs> me. They email me. They send me pictures of new furniture. I'm like, you need to stop now. I'm not coming well, in. If you go in there, the pl- I don't know how they stay in business, because the place is always it's dead. It's always empty. It's true. So... All right. Well, All thank right. you, John. That'll do it for the news. Let's move on to Roundtable Rapid Pfizer. Pfizer. <laughs> Roundtable Rapid I'm Pfizer. I'm wearing off on you, aren't I? Yeah, you are. <laughs> There's something in the air. It's your malware. <laughs> it's your malware has affected me. That's what I wear to the mall. I don't understand what's wrong with that. Let's move on to Roundtable Rapid Fire, and we will start with John Majak. All right. New Zealand Mint releases new Han Solo coins. I think um, I... Han Solo coins. Wow. I've talked about wow. this. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. Just stop. Whoa. <laughs> so I've talked about New Zealand Mint before. I think they're really cool. They do a really great thing. The where... Nookettes were excited. I know. I know. Well, you, you made a correct Star Wars I reference. I was impressed. <laughs> so Just they... say Boba Fett. <laughs> but this happened you in really the movies that I saw. <laughs> I remember those. I went to those. It was that crap that they just put out in the last 15, 15 years. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, um. 
All right. So I've talked about the New Zealand Mint before. I think they're a really cool company. They make collectible coins. Um, one of the things they do is they have an agreement with Disney for their copyright material. So they make like princess coins and Mickey stuff. So they have a new release of Star Wars coins out there. Uh, Han Solo, Han Solo in Carbamite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to create it. This is the second coin that they released. The first one was Darth Vader. That's already sold out. And the one ounce, so, the one ounce gold coin is only twenty eight hundred and fifty dollars. No, the one ounce gold is twenty five hundred. Oh wow! Well. Yeah. The price of gold is going. I don't know. Down. When I looked so at it this morning, adjust? it was twenty eight fifty. This is so. what I just got off the site. So here's the deal, right? Here, you are not. This is not investment in gold or silver. Because it's wildly overpriced. You are buying a piece of art. Right. They're talking about a one ounce silver coin being $85. This is. You're right, 2500 So this is much more than you would pay if you just went out and bought a bullion or if you bought a coin that was not stamped. The cool part is you have a collectible, which is really nice. So if you're into it. And they're numbered. Right. They're numbered. They come in a really cool display thing. Um, and within the Disney community, they actually do increase in value. I've seen some of these coins on eBay. This, the Darth Vader one is selling for more than the price that it sold for originally. When we were at D23, New Zealand Mint was one of the vendors, and I bought John a Steamboat Willie coin, but it's a kilo of silver. It's three and a half pounds of silver. So $2,500 wow. for an ounce of gold with this. Uh, right now, the price of gold is $1,065 per ounce. ounce. Yeah. However, that's, you know, that's not what people would buy it for. It's probably closer to 1200 that's you know the the melt, melt weight melt weight melt price. It's, again, it is this is not a way to invest in a precious metal. However, it's a cool thing, and I I think it's really neat. They do the thing where they sort of paint the coins to oh, the silver ones. Yeah, yeah. So you can get the silver ones are only eighty five dollars. So that's not bad. Silver is eighteen dollars an ounce. But so still, I've, this is much more within reach. Exactly. And if you go back, and if you're a uh, fan oh, of and any, Queen Elizabeth is on the back. Yeah. So Darth Vader, Queen Elizabeth, <laughs> Darth Vader, Queen Elizabeth, <laughs> who I think in the fourth movie was the same person. <laughs> the one with the Luke, I am your queen. Queen Vader. <laughs> queen Vader. <laughs> All right. Or I'm Darth gonna... Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. This sounds like an Eddie Izzard routine. I just want you to know. <laughs> Darth Elizabeth. <laughs> Luke, I am your monarch. <laughs> she has that helmet. And that's her hair. <laughs> <laughs> the Brits are. I'm sorry, we're just funning with you. Please. Oh, they please. would make fun of her too. No, they clutch their pearls. You're calling about the us queen. nerds, by the way. The Chatterati has. Oh, really? Us nerds. Oh, pot kettle black. What are you doing right now? What are you watching right now? It's a show about Disney World. Pot kettle black. <laughs> Don't go there with me. <laughs> this is how we make friends. <laughs> yeah, really. That's just why I'm alone most of the time. <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. Kevin. Oh, man. Oh, it's my turn. Mm. Um, sorry, I was in Darth, Darth Elizabeth mode. <laughs> Are you watching the Royals? Please tell me you're watching the Royals. Everybody should be watching the Royals, except your children. All right. My rapid fire is about the ABD trip that I announced a couple of weeks ago. I suggested that it was going to be October 1st, 2017 for the China trip. I just want you all to know that we've received several emails from expat Americans who are living in mainland China who are telling us that this is a national holiday, October 1st through October 7th is golden week in china and they are strongly suggesting that we not travel this week and we have video this is the great wall of china or wow. walmart on black friday yeah <laughs> really? i'm not quite sure which Jeez. one and if you watch the rest if you just go google golden china great wall or golden week great wall you can find this video and if you watch it these are not tourists from outside of china the people on that wall are Chinese tourists. So we are working with Adventures by Disney to either uh, go before that week or go after that week, and I will keep you updated. But I just want you to know that the October 1st through October 7th dates probably aren't going to work out for us. People are telling us that the airports will be crowded and the right. trains will be sold out and that you won't be able to get into places. And, I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but I got claustrophobia and yeah. crowd fever watching that video so i can't imagine what would happen were it there abd there. is trying to tell us don't worry about it you know because it's abd we'll have all the same access we usually have they however have flags. 
you have the huff legs, <laughs> have the paddle of power, but you can't do anything else if you're not within the Disney bubble. I mean, think about it. You couldn't do anything pre or post, so it, I think it's just a little, a little stressful. So I'll keep you all posted, but that seven days is probably off the table. I'm all right, done. thank you, okay. Kevin. Ms. Whirling. Okay. Um, in sad news, the lumberjacks have left Canada. Boo. All of them? Out of the country? <laughs> yes, yes. Out of the Canadian uh, oh. pavilion area, they're, they're gone. Um, rumor is they're not coming back. Um, it was confirmed. Is it? Has yeah. It been? Orlando okay. Sentinel confirmed it with Disney. Okay. So they're not coming oh, that, back. That went over like a lead balloon. Yeah, I know, right? But in brighter news, there's a musical group that is playing on the stage through... What is it? Holidays around the world. Yeah, they were actually the, really good. I, I was listening to them last night. And they were three very of the good. the three of the guys that are in the band that are playing in Canada are from Mulch, Sweat, and Shears. Oh, okay. So if they're if they look familiar, that's where they're from. But so now there's musical entertainment till they decide what's going to go in there. Yeah, the Holiday Voyagers yes. is what they're called. We have video of the whenever they debuted <clears throat> two years ago. On the website, so I'll make sure there's a, a video of that in the show notes, so everyone can check them out. But I'm sure they've gotten better after a couple of years of practicing, and especially with the addition of the guys from Mulch, Sweat, and Shears. Didn't everybody hate the Lumberjacks? I, mean, I don't think yeah, they were not popular. Yeah. I don't think I've ever watched it. It was always just an empty stage. But nothing, I prefer music in that location. Nothing says you know, like Who getting away the from kilt? the world is like kilt chainsaws. Kilt yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it was terrible. I mean, it was it was sort of entertaining but when you compared it to off kilter there's no comparison I just like what if they were killed just an idea <laughs> i'm brainstorming all right thank you kathy <laughs> Corey. the ganachery is opening at disney springs in uh, december 15th the new chocolate shop will feature a custom blend of freshly made ganache a mixture of chocolate and cream the treats will be Handcrafted on stage for guests to watch. Varieties offered will include dark hazelnut, chipotle, and a custom blend. There will be bars inspired by Disney characters and take-home gift options available. Uh, Disney pastry chef uh, Stefan Reimer says, uh, textures, taste, colors, this is all about relaxing and enjoying bite-sized indulgence. So, new chocolate shop. Yep. Because we need that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Didn't we already up. have that? We all over the place, I'm sure. I, I mean, like, did, wasn't the one where the um, the old woman from Snow White out front on the west side wasn't? Oh, the the villain. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I mean, didn't they make stuff in the window there too? I mean, yeah. We're not talking. I, I'm not sure. There's also Ghirardelli too. But yeah, the, this, is this is kind is a, of not an Imagineering thing. It's just another chocolate shop. It's a ganachery, though. It's fancy. I'm just happy you can say that word. <laughs> ganachery. <laughs> all right, thank you, Corey. Rhino. Um, okay, so mine has to do with some cool, um, Disney announced some uh, Star Wars partnership with Google, so they've done these two new things that they're doing. The first one's called the Awaken the Force Within, um, and that started just a couple days ago. Um, you can see a photo here of that, um, and what you do is you go on to google.com slash Star Wars, and uh, you can choose the light or the dark side, and once you select that, um, like various uh, Google apps um, that you have on your computer, or um, I don't know if it does it on your cell phone, but it will transform to uh, reflect like the path you've chosen. So like your Google Calendar, or Chrome, or when you log into YouTube, it'll be either. The Are light you light side or dark side? Or dark side? side. I, I'd like to believe I'm on the light side, but I get I pretty passionate. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's uh, there is another one that starts tomorrow, so I couldn't check that one out. But it's called um, it's a, some Google Cardboard Virtual Reality app. Um, it says it's the first of its kind VR experience. It was created by ILM Lab. It's a virtual cardboard app. Yeah, it's it's what well, it was made. <laughs> Hold on, understand. let me let me let me finish. This. Are you just saying words? Yeah. So anyway, so Industrial Light and Magic also worked on it and Skywalker Sound. And um, it's supposedly com completely immersive and it tells some sort of like serialized narrative. Um, and it reveals exclusive content that's connected to the opening of The Force Awakens. I don't know how it works. I think you walk around with like your cell phone and it'll be like what I see here. It in Well, it's you know, in a little cardboard right. box and you can hold it up to your head. So I got one. Uh, the last time Conan O'Brien went on the road and did uh, the Comic-Con shows, they sent it out so that way 
you had like a almost like a 3D view where you could look around and see other mm. stuff happening during the show. The cardboard viewers are they're pretty cool yeah. what they can do with them. So, so this one's supposed to be that on the next level, but but I th- I thought it's cool that they're another cool tie-in and they're being uh, kind of you know innovative with what they're doing. So see how it turns out. I'll download it tomorrow and check it out. I just want to make a correction. The Chatterati were not calling us nerds. They were calling the people who buy coins with Han Solo on them nerds. Again, oh, okay. pot, <laughs> kettle, <laughs> black. <laughs> okay? These are the people that will line up at 3 o'clock in the morning to buy a pin. This isn't going over well, Chatterati. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we are all nerds. Mm-hmm. We Amen. are we just because our nerddom will be in other areas. We are all whether you are a robe wearing Potter person or a stormtrooper wearing Star Wars person or a princess dress wearing Disney person like Rhino. Mhm. <laughs> <laughs> you are a nerd. Embrace it. Love your brothers. That is all. There you go, Michelle. Now you have your answer. <laughs> Steve. All right. Uh, Van Stolen. Save me from, from this. This ganachery. <laughs> Van Stolen from Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. Uh, a vehicle was reported stolen from Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort at 5.20 a.m. on Thursday, November 26th. Uh, one juvenile uh, has, been, has been detained with a connection to the theft. Theft? A six-year-old. <laughs> Theft. Uh, two people reported Disney abandoned standards. the vehicle, a Toyota Sienna van, uh, after hitting a kiosk with it. Uh, there was no injuries. Were the rapid fires thin this week? Yeah. No, he's listening to his Apparently. police. He's got his police scanner Well, on. I saw this uh, in the news, it's in our news, scanner, and I yeah. was wanted to ask, is this an uncommon thing that happened? I feel like... God, no, I hope not. People aren't steering cars well, left I and mean, right not here. not all the time, but... Yeah. I'm That's sure why it happens. Yeah, I was I was surprised to hear this. Like there was a story earlier this year where somebody's car was broken into in one of the parking lots or something like mm-hmm. that. Like they smashed the window and took stuff. Yeah. I also need to correct uh, for anyone who's watching. I am literate, and I realized that it was supposed to be stolen on the slide. I just That's made insane. a spelling mistake. Van stole. Van stole. Van stole from Caribbean Beach Resort. Van stole. Van done been up and stole from that resort. <laughs> That's, That's I do know how to spell. It was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, Set his own little cracker Christmas over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I thought you were talking about the shoes when you started talking. That's why I started laughing. Anyway, but, yeah, that's it. You want to do a weather report at the end of that? <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Junior. Craig. Okay, there is a new musical group uh, playing at the United Kingdom Pavilion at Epcot. They are called Quick Step. They are a four-member group uh, who play lots of uh, acoustic inf- instruments, including the fiddle, flute, highland bagpipes, and uh, a traditional Irish frame drum, and more. And uh, yeah, so it's just four people out on the streets in the UK who uh, are playing Scottish, English, and Irish traditional Please songs. go back to that picture. Boom. This is just four guys that showed up. There's a lady And there. they all used to be in mulch, sweat, and tears. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're homeless. <laughs> this is, yeah. Apparently. What they, happened yeah. to the group that was there that was doing this? I think their the contract Beatles? ran up. AARP. Okay. So, okay. yeah, I believe their contract ran up, so now they have in quick step. I haven't got to see them yet. They are uh, playing Wednesdays through Sundays at various times throughout the day, but I don't know. I like a lot of folk music, so I think that this might have potential. Wait, you're saying the rock band? The... No, not the rock okay. band. There's another group the rock band still always performs Good. their awful songs back in uh back in the little pavi- pavilion gazebo thing that they have back there but this is just like street entertainment street and that's all i got to say about that all right thank you craig um now apparently speaking of star wars uh in the window. star wars launch bay opened up at Hollywood Studios this morning, and I believe our own Craig Williams was present for the event. Why don't you tell us what this is and what you saw? Yes, I was there. I was also there along with Rhino and uh, mobs and mobs of people, uh, even though 
it doesn't look that busy now from uh, the the picture I took that we are on the way out. It just looks nice and relaxing. But uh, this was a pretty big event. I mean, they announced that December 1st was going to be the start of Star Wars. But a couple weeks ago, we reported that uh, the new Force Awakens uh, part of Star Tours had been already added to it. So what left that we had was the brand new uh, the Jedi kids show out front of it. Uh, front of Star Tours, as well as the Launch Bay and the Pass of the Jedi film. Uh, so all of those opened up today, but the main thing that everyone was rushing to, uh, besides people wanting to get their kids signed up for the Jedi's Pass, was the Star Wars Launch Bay. And I kind of expected this to be something that was along the lines of like what the uh, Magic of Disney animation was before, where... You know, people would definitely go inside for it for the meet and greets and all of that. But this almost blew away my expectations. Really? Uh, it was it was instantly up to about a 20 minute wait after the park was open for about five minutes. And then that shot up to a 40 minute wait by the time that we are gone. But you walk inside and you're just immersed into this Star Wars fans geek environment right away. Uh, and by that i mean there's a ton of props everywhere uh, some of the cast members were saying that uh a few of the props around were actually authentic from the film uh used props but again it's really hard to verify they might just be saying it because yeah, one of their I, trainers told them that uh somewhere along the line they but, don't have plaques on them that say this is a such, such no but genre. if you like read those uh like really close like i used to do this in the afi showcase at the backlot tour is that they they ha- they would have like a scarlet dress from um uh gone with the wind gone with the wind um and it said like Scarlet O'Hara's dress, Gone with the Wind, but then in really tiny print, it would be like, reproduction. yeah, reproduction done by this one. But also, I mean, how many how many uh, outfits does uh, Daisy Ridley have in this movie that are currently on display here in California and on the where we saw in these various other places? So it leads me to believe that I don't know if any of them are actually. Is this, is this just a walkthrough and props and stuff? Well, the big thing about this is there's two aspects to the launch bay. There's the meet and greet uh, section, which is basically in the same exact places where you could meet the characters from uh, whenever they had like Pixar characters in there before mm-hmm. with the magic of Disney animation down on the lower floor. Uh, now we have two meet and greets here. You have one that's Chewbacca, and then you have one that's Darth Vader. So uh, the rumor that we did hear about it is that the reason why these are inside is because apparently there's some loophole in a contract now that says Star Wars meet and greets can only happen in immersive environments. So They have to have four walls around them at all times. Huh. Yeah, so, so we thought about it like as what? like Diagon well, Alley. Hot house flowers, aren't they? Well, no, when, I understand why. I do, because they want to preserve the yeah. uh, sort of... The, no more backdrops. Right. Yeah, it, it's so, so you can't take a picture of Darth Vader, and all of a sudden there's like another part of the park behind him. Exactly, right. wanna, and that could potentially yeah. be a reason why uh, we don't see we won't see Star Wars weekends anymore. Because the big draw of that was you might be able to walk around uh, the streets of America, and all of a sudden you have random characters just popping out and posing with you. Uh, so if there is that kind of loophole in that way, then that would definitely be the explanation why we won't have that anymore. Uh, but we didn't get a chance to even go inside and do the character meet and greet yet. That'll come at a later day. Well, and it was uh, uh, we were there first thing, and those were already up to ninety minute. Yeah, it's like 75, 90 wow. minute. Wait. I was wow. probably within the first hundred people actually stepping foot in there. <laughs> and by the time I got in, the meet and greets were at twenty and forty minutes, and then they shot up to whatever whatever you said. 70 when, when by the time i got in the because craig and i got separated by like not very many people but it took me 25 minutes to get into the building whereas it he was able to get right in and um on top of that they 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 were having issues because the the you're supposed to watch a film before you go through into this and it wasn't working um yeah. so do you have more pictures yeah. we do uh, it actually kind of was a progression in terms of how you even went through the props so you start off and you go in this room and you see and i'm guessing that's where you'll first get dumped into after you see the movie in the old theater where they did the drawn or the magic yeah that's what it looked like yeah, coming okay. to life so then you step in and you see all the props from the original trilogy and 
uh, you know, rebels and the Imperials. And then from there, up above, it says, like, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And that opens you up into the next room where there's more props, including uh, the freaking awful pod racer from episode <laughs> one that we all want to forget about. And that leads into the larger area with the character meet and greet and then on display there that's whenever it kind of transforms into more of like a force awakens environment so they have uh one of ray's new vehicles just i mean mm. it's massive it takes yeah, up that, a that huge thing was part huge, of the wall huge. uh the picture doesn't do it even a little bit of justice at all this thing is is really incredible to see and then there's this really strange area that kind of felt a little out of place because it was like a meet and greet area that was kind of set around like the cantina almost like they wanted to have uh yeah i thought they were going to serve drinks behind this bar so i was like oh that that would have been cute if they had had like a little station here where you could get the bantha milk that they did at star wars weekends or something but it, it was it was not the case yes. but there were two jawas walking around there and so for anyone who did the uh, character meet and greet breakfast at uh sci-fi dine-in you knew that the jawas were one of the the coolest aspects of that because they were walking around trying to trade uh any type of things that you had on you like, was that the guy with the little red eyes yes yeah oh, cool. there you go Kevin. yeah so I, I, i'm good yeah they're they're still in there they're kind of walking around <laughs> mixing and mingling and doing their thing trying to trade anything you might have on you with whatever they've got in their bag uh, so it's, it's a weird out of place part but it, it fits in well. I think it's trying to be it's trying to be like a sample. I felt like of like what there's the new land, the new ex- expansion will be more like. You know, you're yeah. going to be walking through and you'll walk through a cantina and stuff like that's going to happen. So exactly. Yeah. Uh, they also have a video game section in, so no Battlefront there for you to play. However, they have a system set up that you can test out Disney Infinity on them all around this room and then they had a little bit of star wars angry birds happening on ipads half of them were already broken or not (laughs) working uh i don't don't know what the case was but it it, you know it was a nice little room to get out of the heat or in our case the rain because it was raining when we first got in Uh, so it would have been a nice little escape for people and then the highlight of the area was getting to see a lot of the stuff for the force awakens um Again, probably these were all replicas, but you walk in and the first thing on the left that you notice right away is one of the new Stormtrooper uh, costumes. The Flame Trooper, just, yeah. Yeah, the Flame Trooper. And just seeing a life-size replica of that, it just it gets you so excited to see what's actually going to be in the new movie coming out because it's impressive. And there's all sorts of just little hidden prop areas around there. Like there's a this one storage area prop thing in the side of the wall that's got a little bit of nod so rhino i think you you mentioned a couple things you saw in there in the bottom left you can see that white thing on the picture was like boba fett's or or it might have been Django fett's but it was one of their 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 jet packs and then on like the second shelf up i noticed it was the kid uh it was anakin like kid anakin's uh binoculars and then there was um was something C-3PO's on the C-3PO's arm. C-3PO's arm, yeah. And what's cool is it's C-3PO's arm that's missing from the new movie th- where he's got the red arm. So I was like, oh, there's the arm. That's We've got it. <laughs> um, so I thought that was like a cool, a nice little little touch. Yeah, so... Steve, somebody's knocking at the door. No. No? Oh, never mind. Uh, so, yeah, the, this room was definitely the highlight of it. It's where I think we spent most of our time just so we could... Uh, learn more about like the resistance, the new rebels in a way, because they're no longer rebels. They're the resistance, and then they're uh, that. Of course, had to always lead into a gift shop. So they now have the cargo bay gift shop. Uh, after you're done with everything in the launch bay, and this is primarily just the same stuff they've always had before at the other shops, especially like Star Wars Weekends, except this was the more high-end uh, yeah. collectible. So like Pete's lightsaber, the uh, somewhere in this room, uh, they had a whole ton of those. They added the D-Tech on Demand, uh, new Star Wars they customizable the, um, magic bands and phone cases in this store. The first, when you walk through, you have to walk through like Acme Archives has all their Star Wars prints are on, like, on display on either side and then in the middle and stuff like that. And then they had like a full body stormtrooper so you can buy the full size stormtrooper the life size stormtrooper and he and uh 
like there, then when you get in the store, they had costumes. So you could buy Han Solo's costume, and it was. Um, and then there was an Imperial Trooper. There was a lot. There was like a life-size Imperial Trooper statue that was nine thousand dollars. Wow! Just wow. I mean, awesome, but completely ridiculous. The, I don't think the Stormtrooper was eight, eighteen hundred dollars. I took What's a picture. That? The Stormtrooper was eighteen hundred dollars. The Han Solo costume seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. So very very high end. Uh, overall, the launch bay. Uh, I think it will be a very good place for people to go in and spend a lot of time, just like Magic and Disney Animation was. Uh, they also do have the Chase, Chase Visa meet and greet that's being special, especially put in there, where if you have that Chase Disney Visa card, then you can meet um, the characters with a highly shortened wait. Um, right now, that's not currently open, they said, for the oh, current time being until it's ready to be open that they're just uh, closing off one of the lines for a little while and letting people meet like either Chewbacca or Darth Vader. But I'm sure that will be open in the next uh, few weeks or potentially even days. Not quite sure, but it, it's a good perk to have. And there's select times that you can only visit. So I believe it's from like 11 to 1 o'clock or 2. So it is very limited. It's something you'll want to be in line for quickly. Is there a fast pass for the meet and greets? No, no. there is not, no not fast yet, pass I don't think. Them. I don't think there will be. I didn't see any special way they could set up lines. Oh, because I, I was leaning on one of the fast pass things. Oh, you were? Yeah. Well, then I don't. maybe they have a different way to rearrange lines. To me, it didn't look like they could really do it. But I guess they did have an extra wait time sign on there where they could say for fast pass plus. But we got to check out some of the other because they, they released the – there was like a slew of Star Wars stuff today. So we got to do check out some other stuff like they just opened the Jedi Training Academy – um, just redid their um, Trials of a Jedi. And so the stage is now themed to like a temple instead of the it being like the interior of like the Death Star or that kind of imperial aesthetic. And they redid the Jedi's costume. And we, we walked by right as they were doing some kind of impressive choreography between Darth Maul and the, the Jedi from the Rebels TV show. I don't know the girl's name. Yeah, we didn't... Uh... We didn't stay and watch the entire show just because we didn't get uh, good timing on it. But overall, the show seemed to be taken to the next notch. Uh, first, they made the stage so much bigger, so now they added a lot more, uh, a lot more opportunities for kids to be a part of it. Because before, I think it was about a group of maybe fifteen kids, yeah, the most or so that would ever be on there. I would say there was about thirty up on stage for this one. Because they've got like um, a lower section they added to it that's like a permanent part of the stage now. Yeah, and it, overall it just looked more professional. It looked like they were finally starting to take Star Wars seriously by building this brand new stage and really upping the theatrics of the show itself. And uh, Darth Vader, of course, is still on hand there. And Darth comes Maul? out with Darth Maul was there. We got to see his choreography. It's Mal. And Mal. Mal. <laughs> Darth, Darth, Darth Malware. Mal. Darth Malware and uh, the seventh sister was also there along with Darth Vader. Um, what happened to the other six sisters? I don't I believe see either of those two. We guys. weren't there yet. But oh, I'm looking oh, okay. at other pictures that people posted online. I was like, what? And, uh, so that I think it's really a big upgrade to that show. It's something that I it think has... will be more entertaining for adults too now, not just adults who want to watch their kids. Yeah, it's in got like a, a story now because we, we, we what I caught what we caught was the end is that Darth Darth Maul was there because this Jedi that was there training with them it was her fear of him brought him out of the temple so mm -hmm. the kids had to like force push the character back into the temple and mm -hmm. after they did the fighting so yeah. I was impressed by that because I always thought before it was kind of like I felt weird being over there if you don't have a kid or anything like that because it's just like chop to the head chop to the leg deflect so yeah. it was nice and then we got to go on Star Tours and check out the new edition The Force Awakens addition to that which was pretty impressive yeah um, so it has the millennium falcon flying on jakku uh being chased by the new tie fighters and overall it's just impressive they have finn uh pop up on the side screens and talk John to Boyega your star too yeah. yeah and it's actually him uh overall it just it got me pumped for the new movie having it just seamlessly fit in there and of course this is running constantly for the first month no matter what you get on you'll get this one and there's even a bb8 appearance uh that was really as cool. well in there so you won't get to see uh admiral akbar or princess leia or i can't remember yoda who, yoda you don't see the three of them in the transition sequence now you see bb8 roll out and oh my gosh the kids were 
freaking obsessed with it in there. They wouldn't shut up when BB-8 came out. The kids. So. Just the kids? Just the just Oh, the, <laughs> like, literally, you couldn't hear anything happening because every kid, that's BB-8, that's BB-8. <laughs> <laughs> we all know. Um, <laughs> Pass He's going to make Jedi. a wonderful father. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> Awful. Uh, Pass of the Jedi was added into the ABC Sounds Dangerous studio now that that's no longer there. This is a 17-minute show that if you've seen any of the movies before and you've seen the trailers for The Force Awakens, you don't need to waste your time. It's just like a highlight reel of everything that happens in them, uh, but really specifically focused on the Jedi. Uh, I will never see it again, and I think a lot of people will walk away ticked if they have to actually wait a long time for this. And uh, like we said, too, just overall, this... Although we don't have, like, Season of the Force right now like Disneyland has, this is really permeating all parts of the park. So this is intense. Like, Backlot Express just debuted a new menu today as well as part of it, kind of like they added at Disneyland where they have the Royal Guard Burger, which is one of the, It's a burger with the black buns. Uh, oh, if you've yeah. seen any pictures of those, they look disgusting. They do look <laughs> disgusting. There. They have dark side chicken and waffles, uh, Carillion space fries, and uh, a bunch of different. I saw it like the boat uh, restaurant. They had a blue milkshake. So they're they're really they're pushing Star Wars everywhere around here now. Um, this is it's an event without it actually being an event. Uh, so expect it to be something big whenever you actually show up here. This isn't just a, a little makeover for the day. My kids are going to be lost. <laughs> I, I need to get them. You You've know, been saying movies. that for a year. Oh, I know. I, 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 gotta... I bought John Star Wars Cheez-Its <laughs> yesterday. <You did. laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that, Craig. That is going to do it for our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next time with another edition of The Diz Unplugged. Thanks for being with us, everyone. And remember... Stay out of the damn lakes. Have a good week.